In one of my recent weekly live streams that I do every Monday night at five o'clock Pacific time, I talked about this one specific example using the product rule to find the derivative of a function. But it was a very weird example because the function that was given in the problem was actually a quotient, it was a fraction. So you'd probably look at that and you think, why are you trying to apply product rule when you should be using quotient rule? Well, what I wanna show you in this example and which I'm gonna go into greater detail in this video is how you can kind of manipulate functions into a way that you can apply product rule even if it doesn't look like it. And you might think that sounds kind of silly, but the thing is, and this is a pretty common idea in calculus or really in any math, if there's a way of doing something that you feel more comfortable with, why not form the problem to fit the way of doing it that makes more sense to you? Now, don't get me wrong. If you struggle with quotient rule, for example, you definitely should spend more time practicing and learning the quotient rule. But this could be a kind of helpful trick, maybe if you're in a test situation where you get a quotient rule example and you can't remember the quotient rule formula, but you can remember the product rule formula. You can kind of manipulate the problem in a way to use the formula that you can remember. So you definitely shouldn't use a trick like this to avoid learning a topic. However, it can be a helpful trick to make sure that you're able to complete the problem in a test type of situation. And although this is a very specific example and a specific concept that I'm gonna be going over in this video, it's a good general idea to keep in the back of your head as you work through other, you know, unrelated types of problems. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the example and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. We are going to differentiate g of t equals t minus the square root of t all over t to the one third. So here's the thing. You're probably looking at this and thinking, product rule does not apply there. What the heck are you talking about? There's no product. And you're right. But there is a trick we can apply here in order to use the product rule. And I know that seems weird. I mean, looking at this, clearly there's division, right? We have this fraction where we have this top function and bottom function. Quotient rule probably makes more sense here, right? Well, you definitely could use quotient rule. You would definitely be right about that. However, there's a way we can use product rule instead. Now, like I said, quotient rule would definitely work. If you're comfortable with quotient rule and you want to use it, do it. But we can also use this exact same example to get practice with product rule instead. And what you would find is you would actually end up getting the exact same thing. However, there is an important step we need to take before applying product rule because we don't have a product as it is right now. We have to do some rearranging, right? Because like I've been saying, in order to apply product rule, you need to have one function times another function. Well, we don't have that. But let's think about how we could rewrite this fraction to instead of having division, have multiplication. Well, that's gonna come into play based on our denominator right here. So what we wanna think about is, how could we rewrite this fraction so that there is no division and instead multiplication? Well, in general, if you ever have a fraction like this, if you ever have your denominator like this, you can move something out of a denominator up into the numerator of a, of a fraction by making the power negative. If the power already is negative, you just make it negative, which turns it into a positive, right? So instead of writing this as t minus the square root of t divided by t to the one third, we can rewrite this as t to the negative one third times t minus the square root of t. Okay, and make sure you put the t minus root t in parentheses because this need, would need to be distributed in and multiplied by both of these terms. Just like up here, it's dividing both of those terms by t to the one third. So these two things are actually equivalent. This g of t is exactly the same as this g of t. There's no difference. And now notice when we look at this, we do have a product. We have this term being multiplied by this thing here. So what we can do is we can say f equals t to the negative one third. And I'm going to use, I know the, the product rule formula that you typically see has f and g, but since this function is called g, I don't want there to be any confusion about uh, this G being this different from that G. So I'm going to say we're going to use F and H instead. So it's the exact same idea for using the product rule formula, except I've substituted G out for H. Same idea though. Okay. We're still going to go through the exact same steps. So this still is going to be applicable to any product rule problem. So what we're going to have is T to the negative one third as F, and then H is going to be all this stuff. So T 
minus the square root of t. Okay. Now, what we can do once we have decided what's f and what's h, we then need to find f prime and h prime. So the derivative of this, we can just use the power rule. Power rule says we bring our power down in front, keep our t, our base the same, and then subtract one from the power. Negative one third minus one is the same as negative one third minus three thirds. Negative one minus three is negative four all over three. So this new power is gonna be negative four thirds, not negative four fourths, my bad. Negative four thirds. And then over here, what we actually probably wanna do before taking the derivative here is rewriting this square root as t to the one half. So anything to the one half power is exactly the same as taking the square root of it. One half power and square root mean the exact same thing. But this is going to be easier to take the derivative of than this. Because to take the derivative of t to the one half power, we can just use the power rule. So the derivative of t minus t to the one half. The derivative of t is just one. And then the derivative of t to the one half is just power rule. We bring our power down in front, bring the one half down in front, keep our base t as t, and then subtract one from the power. One half minus one is negative one half. Okay. Now, like we've been doing, once we have figured out our g, our, or I'm sorry, our f, our h, our f prime, our h prime, we just multiply across, make an x. So we get t to the negative one third, times this one, so one minus one half t to the negative one half. And then do this one times this one. So we get negative one third t to the negative four thirds times t minus t to the one half. So notice I did what I kind of mentioned in the prior example here. You want to put each of these things in parentheses so that when you multiply across, if there's any sort of distributing that needs to be done, you'll remember to do it, thanks to the fact that there's parentheses, okay? And then once you've multiplied across like this, all you do is add a plus sign in there, okay? So this is g prime of t. Now what we can do from here is to go ahead and distribute and simplify. So we can distribute this into both of those terms there, uh, distribute this into both of those terms there. So t to the negative one third times one is just t to the negative one third uh, minus one half times t. When you multiply two things with the same base, they both have t as the base in this case, you would add the power. So negative one third minus one half is the same as negative uh, two sixths minus three six negative two minus three is negative five over six so the power is going to be negative five over six and then this times t remember t is the same as t to the one so we add our power so we get negative four thirds plus one giving us negative one third t to the negative one third negative four thirds plus one is negative one third and then this times this term. So negative one third times our negative. So we're going to get plus one third t, t to the negative four thirds plus one half. Negative four thirds plus one half is the same as negative four, not negative four, sorry. We need to turn this into six. So we're going to multiply this by two over two. So it's the same as negative eight over six plus three over six negative eight plus three is negative five over six. Okay, so now we have a t to the negative five six here and here. We also have a t to the negative one third here and here. So those are going to be able to combine. Combine our like terms at this point. So t to the negative one third minus one third t to the negative one third is two thirds t to the negative one third. We just are adding coefficients at this point. And then t to the negative five six t to the negative five six. The coefficients are negative one half and positive one third. So negative one half plus one third is the same as negative three six plus two six is negative one six. 
So minus one six t to the negative five six. So now this this is going to be simplified as far as it's, as far as it's going to get, and that's going to be the derivative of this function up here. And like I said, if you were to apply the quotient rule instead of the product rule using the function in this form, you should end up with the exact same derivative as what we got here by doing product rule. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you could see yourself using this trick on a test, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button down below so we can spread this video out to more and more people and keep growing the Jake's Math Lessons community. It really would be a huge help to my channel so I can keep growing my channel and keep making more videos like this for you. And if you want to keep learning about product rule or other derivative methods, just go ahead and click on one of those videos over there and let's keep on learning. Thanks and see you next time.